first look at Dead Cells, which is a Castlevania style roguelike. Roguelite, I'm never sure which one is which. Where you play a guy with no head. Oh god. A guy with no head whose job it is to kill things. Ooh, some kebabs to restore health. So, I have just started a fresh run. This is about my fifth or sixth run in the game. So just enough time to get a little bit of a handle on what's exactly going on in the game. How the mechanics work. So like that right there, that is a, that'll give us a bunch of gold. So on the left you can see two different uh, resources down there. We've got the blue, which is cells, which are used to upgrade in between our runs. And if you die, you lose them all. And then underneath that we've got your standard gold resource. Oh, that is a bomb. And we will be rewarded with gold and cells for killing various things throughout the map. This is a teleporter. We haven't unlocked any other teleporters on this map yet. There's our, our map so far. This is like the first area. There's a bunch more areas. I've seen four or five so far. Uh, there's more than that. Of course, I've only just started to scratch the surface. So the objective is basically kill, to kill enemies and collect gold and get upgrades and items and cells. So the more cells we get, the cells are used to upgrade things that we have that we're carrying, uh, our weapons, our character. Those carry over, but we have to make it to the end of the area in order to spend the cells. Okay, so here's a teleporter, so like if I wanted to, I could teleport back up here. Go this way. Now, this is the game. Makes it this way makes it nice and easy to get back around large areas of the map. That is a vine growing ability that I got for ouch, for killing the game's first tough enemy. Ooh, that looks like a good weapon right there. So, pre periodically around the map, we'll pick up different weapons. In this case, we are picking up an electric whip. Ow, fuck! And we can use that electric whip. This is a shielding type enemy. He will, once he turns to us, ouch, he will do that little shield bash charge. And we will have to roll out of the way of it. So that's our primary method for avoiding attacks is that roll. We get a little bit of a few iframes and then we can turn around and attack. There are several different kinds of enemies even just in this first level and each of those enemies has their own pattern. So, sort of a little bit in the vein of Castlevania, where you have a lot of enemies with a lot of different patterns that you kind of have to memorize. So this is a door that will take us to another part of the level. But as you can see, I haven't explored much, and I see down there there's a treasure I didn't get. So, let's go down and get that treasure. It's pretty much straight down below us. So that's my, that attack is when I drop. It's like a stun attack. It'll stun enemies. So there's a treasure room right below us here, so we gotta figure out how to get down there. Alright, it's right here. Cool. Several different kinds of doors. That These happen to just be basic doors. Uh, basic doors don't really require much. A greed shield blocks attacks and shakes out any loose gold from your enemy's teeth once per enemy. Also transforms enemies' arrows into gold. Um, I much prefer to keep two weapons, two offensive weapons. So that's what we're going to do. Um, that's not to say that you can't... That's something I haven't unlocked yet. That's not to say there's anything particularly against... Uh, Having a weapon that is a defense weapon like that, uh, there's definitely some scenarios where it's useful. Oh, here's a shop. So this is a shop, and uh, we have a lot of gold, so we can enough to buy any of these items. We have a amulet. If you look on the far left, you see there's like a little collar with a lock on it. That collar with a lock on it is our current item. Damage from projectiles reduced by 75%. That is an excellent amulet. Uh, and then we have the bear trap, which is an active skill. Those are like the the sword we have in the the electric whip, and then we have uh, Spartan Sandals 2, which is a weapon uh, and a scroll of power, which will improve our stats. Um, let's go ahead and grab this guy right here, this amulet, because that is really quite a nice amulet. 75% uh, reduction in range damage is about as good as it gets. Um, even though we're still rocking the basic sword. Ow. Ah. 
Now, of course, that's not going to help us with these guys, because these guys aren't range damage. Ow! I ran right into that. I'm going to get out of the way of this guy here. We are we're super low on health. This is a not going to heal me, but it's going to give me more health. So I am going to heal. I get a heal. Right now, I get it once per game. It's uh, on my left bumper there. You can see I just consumed it. Kind of rem in, in reminiscence of the... Uh, Way you heal in Dark Souls, where you have a, like a vial full of a potion, and it does not recharge automatically. You have to recharge it manually at recharge stations that exist periodically throughout the game, in between the levels, mostly so far as where I've encountered them. But I've also been told that they exist elsewhere. Oh boy, there's a lot of enemies in this area. Um, normally I would also have a another attack that's like a sort of um. Holy shit, that fucking hurt. This guy is dropping, like, little bombs. I've never seen that before. Okay, I'm gonna die. Yep, I died. Well, you'll get to see what happens when you die. So, I lose my de my cells, my dead cells. I lost nine of them there, uh, which is not too many. A uh, lot would be, like, 50-55. And I have an ability that lets me preserve some of my gold. I didn't have that much gold. Uh, only 1,200. Uh, but if you have a lot more gold, like let's say you have several thousand, that ability is really nice. Now, to start off with, I have not yet gotten any other starter weapons. This will show you like what items I've unlocked, kind of. Those are all items I've picked up uh, in the basic rarities, in the orange, green, etc., etc. So, one thing that uh, I wish was that the, was a little more random, of course, but obviously can't be random. Uh, won't, wouldn't be much of a Metroidvania. So we know we can't get into that. I mean... We know we can't get into that side area there. We're gonna roll under this. Hit him with an arrow in the head. And then heal up with that kebab. Um, this time we're gonna go straight to that other area so I can kind of show you what it looks like to get to another area of the game. Your basic attacks and combos are gonna be pretty simple. You're just gonna wanna roll underneath when they attack. So, whoop, he's attacking, roll underneath. And if we can, we'll shoot an arrow. Ow. Range attacks are always useful. And then, of course, if you don't have the ability to get through them with a range attack, you can just come by and hit them with that. Sword. This is a rusty sword. <laughs> Ow. You're getting messed up. This is a rusty sword. It doesn't do a lot of damage. I wish I had a little bit more of a better starter sword. There are some better starter swords out there. We have a lot of gold already. 1,800 gold. Uh, I'm gonna not heal because it's still a 55 health. We got a pair of archers there. We stunned the one in the back. Ow! Whoa! We can shoot arrows at that guy all day and it won't do anything. This is a, a little mechanic. a little mechanic here. We can roll underneath this and it will help us. It will help us to escape. The main main focus in this game is to sort of strike and then hide. Strike and then hide, because you're not powerful enough to take on a lot of enemies directly. Uh, this is a strength item, so we got plus one strength. It's going to slightly increase our weapon damage. Uh, I don't really like to grab strength, usually, if I'm given an option, because <laughs> weapon damage doesn't really make much difference if you're dead. Uh, Alright, so I'll pick up Frost Blast. Frost Blast is, in my opinion, a mostly useless attack, because it requires a cooldown, so this should be the area up here that we go to that will get us to the next part of the level. I'll show you what Frost Blast does right now. Let's freeze that guy and stun him briefly and then we can attack him while he is stunned. Cannot stun, obviously, the that guy. So let, I was trying to get my downward attack there, but it wasn't really working. Alright, so now I'm down to 27 health, which is kind of like two hits, so I really do need to heal, so I'm going to grab that heal there. Not back to full health, but pretty close. Oh, gosh. Oh, I forgot I don't have my bow anymore. Where did this guy come from? Oh, but I killed him. All right, let's go back up here. Go back up here. There we go. So there's a bit of toxic sewers. I just want to show you guys what it looks like to advance a level here. It's uh, pretty simple. Oh, I should probably. So now we've gone into the sewers, and we're going to start off by going down to this guy, and he is going to be our guy that gives us more, 
uh, our upgrades. So you can see I only have six cells, so I'm not gonna really be able to get much upgrades. Uh, I'll be able to I'll be able to grab the first upgrade for the blood sword, uh, which will let me start with the blood sword at the beginning instead of the basic sword. But uh, weapons usually cost the first tier costs ten, the second tier costs fifty. So, and then after that, I've not seen what's after that. Um, so far, the upgrades I have are gold recovery one, which is why I'm conserving some of my gold when I die, and then that healing potion. Uh, the game did, did make me unlock the healing potion first. I didn't really get a choice. Uh, let's go ahead and keep the frost. Actually, no, we want to keep the frost blast. Pick up the blood sword and change it out for the rusty sword. There we go. So the blood sword is a much slower attack, but it causes bleeding. And under the right circumstances... Oh, I'm still carrying cells, apparently. And every once in a while, it will emit a, an arrow to shoot a barrage of arrows in front of me. So you'll see that in a second. All right, now here we're going to go over here, and this is going to give us a refill on our potion, so that we can not die again immediately. And it'll refill our health, and then we'll proceed into the toxic sewers. And this is an entirely new map. Um, you can kind of think of every time that first area will be the same. It's kind of like dungeon floors, uh, if you've ever played different dungeon games. So there you see, see that's shooting out an arrow there, so I have a bit of a ranged attack as well. There's a scorpion guy there. Climb up this vine. So I also unlocked that vine climb. Oh, I forgot. I switched that over to ice blast. I switched that over to ice blast. Uh, here we've got a grenade, a flashbang. So we can uh, pick that up, and now we will have... Uh, so there's two kinds of skills. We have our active skills, on the top, uh, we have our weapons, and on the bottom we have our skills. The skills you use by the right and left trigger, so like that I can throw, that's a flashbang. Uh, it inflicts 24 damage and stuns enemies for 2 seconds, and then I have my skills, which are my X and my Y button, which is my Ice Blast and my Sword. And the skill, the difference is the skills are a little bit more uh, damage dealing, a little bit more specialized, and they have a cooldown attached to them. Whereas the weapons have no such cooldown attached to them. There is fall damage. Uh, I mitigated it there by doing the down attack. There's a sort of an attack that well, that goes downwards. Um, oh, those little, So those guys, I learned this the hard way, those little exploding eggs. You don't want to be standing on those when they blow up. Let's stay away from the exploding eggs. So, what happens when you hit those, uh, when you hit those exploding? Eggs? So the all of these abilities and weapons you only get them uh, once per run. So you'll when you die you'll restart with the basic again, and you won't have the power. You won't have the active abilities, the right trigger, that stun ability, and you won't have uh, any of the new weapons you've picked up. There's a teleporter there. Here we also have our frost ability will also allow us to walk over this poison. Normally that would be poison and if we touched it, it would start causing damage over time. A little DOT to us. I had not seen that before. That thing charged straight at me. I don't want to get away from those, of course. It would throw a little DOT at us, but because we're able to freeze it with our ice blaster, we don't have that DOT problem. So we've already been down, so let's go this way. Uh, nope, we can't make that jump. Looks like we're gonna go down this way instead. Uh, so we'll go over here, and then over here. Just like any good Metroidvania game, you kind of have to explore a little bit. There's plenty of hidden and secret areas. Uh, super nice way to see where there are where areas you've been before is if there are enemies there, then you've probably not been there before. Because enemies do not respawn in this giant castle of doom. So what ends up happening is... Ooh, got hit there. A hard hit. Uh, as we progress through different parts of the... different levels and different bits and parts, uh, we will take much more damage uh, than we did originally. Enemies will do more damage and we will not have as much health. Okay, so this is a, a time door. You can see it looks like an hourglass. It is closed. Uh, you have to reach that door in a certain amount of time. So next time we come back to this map, if we are a little bit faster, we'll be able to reach that door more quickly. So let's go down. See what we can find. Blood Sword's doing us pretty good so far. I like the range attack as well. The range attack is really nice. I can actually just... Oh! 
I tried to dodge that and failed horribly. Now here we have another power scroll. I think that's the second one we've picked up this run, so... That is an elite enemy, so we gotta be careful about that. Um, so those guys give abilities when you kill them, but you have to be really careful when you fight them because they are very powerful. Uh, so let's let's jump down and heal. And I only have six cells, but I have a lot. I have 5,300 and some gold. It's a lot of gold to lose, but let's give it a try. Oh god, nope, that was a terrible idea. Uh, I lost half my health without even really doing anything. Um, looks like we won't be advancing that way. So let's see, where can we go from here? Uh, we can try going farther down. There's another down over here. Uh, I just do, I'm not uh, not tanky enough, not enough stats wise to fight that guy. So there's just no way. Um, what, oh, that was the scorpion hit me there. Uh, so one thing I can do, since this is a blood sword, is try to get a little bit of health from killing enemies. Oh, this is a dead end. That's no good. Oh, is this a hidden? Use the runes. I've not seen this before. This is a brand new mechanic to me. Oh boy. Uh, well, I don't have a lot of health, and I don't know what this is, but let's find out. New challenge. Kill all enemies made to the exit without getting hit. Well, that doesn't seem very likely. I mean, I'm gonna try, but that just doesn't seem... I'm not good at not taking hits at all. That's a really, a really tough challenge. Um, especially when we've got guys like this. Oh, that Ice Blaster, man. That Ice Blaster is really helping out. Oh, and there you go. I failed the challenge. Um, which is too bad, and it looks like it took me down to 2 HP. Uh, so one more hit and I'm dead. <laughs> one more hit and I am a toasty, roasty, super dead. Um, let's go get killed by that elite enemy. Uh, I'm going to lose my 8 cells, of course, and uh, also my 5,000 gold. Not that it really matters too much gold-wise. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not really anywhere else we can go. Uh, we're kind of SOL. We definitely don't have the, uh, the, the ability to take this guy on. I mean, we can try to run. Let's see if they'll go past if we just sort of look over here. No, no. no yeah, no. And I'm dead. Maybe I should have tried to freeze that elite enemy. Um, so I lose my eight cells, and of course I lose all my gold. But there's another body to be reanimated. Bit of a rough run. Uh, definitely not my one of my better runs. So once again, we will not get the blood sword, even though we upgraded it. Uh, it will be upgraded when we get to it. You should be able to see it up there somewhere. There it is up there on the top. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't get the blood sword, so we're going to start with that bow again. And of course, we've lost our abilities. So then we come back here. Go back out again if I can jump. There we go. Back out, and you'll notice that we're in the exact same level layout. There's our circle door, and here's that first archer enemy. The only difference between the runs is the enemy density and the enemies that are there. The difference in type of enemies, and uh, of course how good you get at it. Uh, so, as you start to recognize where you are and what you're doing, you'll be able to get through levels quicker and quicker more and more quickly uh, and of course that may that may lose some of the replayability um, this is a game in early access still so it's not it's not done there's no there's no story really to speak of yet you're just kind of a dead guy I mean I guess that's the story of Dark, Cell, of, of Dark Souls you're kind of a dead guy who needs to do a thing to save the world uh, that's, that's yeah, I guess it's a story now, there's no story that I would call a story per se as of yet in this game uh, but it's something that developers are working on adding, and of course they're adding more monsters, more updates daily. More and more and more is coming, and I have a lot of uh, a lot of faith in the in the studio. This is their first their first rodeo, but I have a lot of faith in them. Uh, the game is looking fantastic. If you are, especially if you're a fan like me, of this sort of aesthetic, um, very much reminds me of the aesthetic of Risk of Rain, where there's a you know it's, it's 
pixel art style without being true pixel art. So here we're in the shop again and we can grab some firebrands. Uh, this is an excellent, excellent, excellent weapon. So we're going to buy that and we're going to swap it for our bow. Uh, this throws a little potion on the ground and causes AoE damage, uh, which is just so good. Um, I don't even have to like look at them and they're all basically dead. They're gonna die from AoE. So this is a throwing knife. Uh, the game also has thro has thrown weapons like throwing knives. Um, I don't like them. Oh god. Uh, like watch again so we can see that there's they're really not they don't do a stellar amount of damage. Um, they're mostly meant because of their amazing amount of uh, they, they do a lot of bleed. Throwing knives or, or kunai do a lot of bleed damage. Uh, let's see if we can get upstairs to go there. There was another level up here. We'll get this this chest here. Looks like that just gave us a bunch of cells. Eleven actually. So it would behoove us not to die. Um, we have once we have a thousand gold, we can go and get frost blaster again in there. All right, we've got another teleporter. That's a lot of teleporters. And uh, then we have a dead guy. He's dead. And that's recent. Oh, that's always a little spooky, right? Alright, well, let's go find out what killed him, probably, I would say. Oh, he dropped some stuff for us. Cool. Looks like he dropped a broadsword blueprint and some nice ammo. So we're gonna... We're gonna fire an ice over here, because, you know, I think I really do did enjoy having... Uh, this frost blaster. So we'll replace the kunai with the frost blast, and we'll do we can frost blast and then fire them in the face. And uh, we'll head to this the promenade of the condemned, which will allow us to spend the souls we have, the eleven souls that we have, um, as well as as kind of sit, get a moment's rest. So let's let's grab those. We have uh, eleven. Does massive damage, broadsword. So uh, I can go ahead and grab one of these items. Uh, let's get the daggers. And then we can also go ahead and just put one into the uh, the knife storm. There you go. And then we'll we'll go over here once again. We'll replenish our health. I don't need it, but we'll replenish my health, and we'll go out to the promenade of the condemned. This is an outdoor area, so it's a different area. There's there's several different areas in the game. There's Oh, that's right. I'm um, fire and ice. Fire and ice. Come on. Oh, that's not. This, this is not working. All right. So fire and ice build not as effective as I'd hoped. Uh, since I don't have any way to do direct damage. Although that's kind of nifty. I'm not gonna lie. So, this area is outdoorsy, prom the promenade. Just like in, in your Castlevania series, you've got a whole different group of areas and a whole different set of enemies in every area. We've only seen some of the more basic enemies so far. Oh, excellent. Kebabs. But uh, there are more advanced enemies as we go on. And like you saw, there's enemies like those elite enemies that we will eventually have to kill. Uh, we cannot progress the game without killing those elite enemies, so they have to die eventually. And there's, of course, wouldn't be a Metroidvania without a little platformer. A little platforming in the middle. So here's a, a nice... A, a nice teleporter. So we did not make it here in time. We missed it by about 57 seconds. Uh, so the next time I come back to the promenade, I will know that I need to rush very quickly over to here. This is a health pickup. If you keep an eye on my health on the bottom left, you'll see it just went up by about 40 points, which is quite a lot, actually. Ow. Not enough, evidently. And then this is a strength power-up, which will level up my weapons. There you go. Not getting a lot of cells, but we're getting plenty of other level ups here. Ow! Mine. Oh boy. Well, 
that's quite effective. Doesn't look like anything can really get close to me as long as I'm using that firebrand and I can just kind of throw it. Oh, right, there's a wall there. Helps if you notice the wall. There you go. Uh, we're doing pretty good on gold, uh, not so much on cells. Obviously, you saw, so, uh, hopefully, you saw, you noticed how many cells it actually takes to start to get some of those later upgrades. 50, 60 is pretty common. Did I already unlock this teleport? No, I did not. Okay. 50 to 60 is pretty common. Uh, that's sort of the normal number. We've got a 1400 gold in. We'll get, grab some health. Looks like we're setting ourselves up maybe for a boss fight. We're at 199 health, which is quite a lot. Uh, it's nearly twice what we started with. So can we freeze these pools? Yes, we can. Cool. Up we go. Let's see what's on the top. Nothing? Nothing? Okay. Nothing on the top. So without like a bladed weapon, it's a lot harder to break the in-game set items, but the trade-off is that we get to do that, uh, which I could not do with any of the builds I was working on previously. Ow. But I have to do things like that. Just jump up and... Is that a ninja? Oh, that was me, okay. I was like, fucking ninja. Okay, we can just kill him with those little AoEs there. Yeah, this is the little ninja guy right here. Ow. Oh, I guess I froze him in place, wasn't that what that was? What that was? It's so another teleporter, very nice. Okay, let's get this guy dead. Man, that fire damage is super powerful. Super, super duper powerful. It's really nice to have that, that ability to just freeze and then burn them. Alright, let's see. We gotta be careful over here. And then this is a, an elevator, so it will take us down. And it will take us back up, obviously. It's time to go back up. A little bit of platforming. Hopefully there's something worthwhile down here. Oh, it's a shop. All right. A very expensive shop, and I apparently only have 500 gold. I thought I had a shitload of gold, but I guess I don't have any. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I died or something. All right, well, let's teleport back up to the top. Teleporters come in handy for once. Oh, this segment. I died earlier on this segment. All right, so this is a, a, a platforming timing segment where we've got a that. That wasn't so bad. I had a, <laughs> had a lot less luck with that last time. Also, these shields uh, that you see on these enemies are super duper hard to get rid of without this AoE damage. AoE damage really doing me good. Hey, I'm surprised they can even kill those flying guys without too much trouble. And the mages really don't pose any problem at all. Time we go. Rare blueprint, horizontal turret. So those blueprints are things that I get, and then they go to the when we go to the end of the level in the shop, sort of. Uh, you see, you'll see that I'll be able to upgrade those blueprints. That's what I was upgrading. Uh, we have a huge door, 3,700 gold required to open that door. We're not even close to that level. Oh god, that this is a bad situation for us. There are. Yeah, there were two enemies there, and only one, uh, only one of me. Ah, uh, this is bad. Those, uh, those range attacks that can penetrate through walls make this obnoxiously hard to get rid of. It's not these little guys that are so problematic, it's these things, these guys over here. Especially the ones with the shields just take a long time to kill. Their TTK is very long.
A lot of rolling and dodging. <laughs> the timing, as long as you can get the timings down, it's not so bad. It's uh, trying to get those timings down that really can really mess you up. But the fire is doing a good job. Even against these shielded enemies, it's doing a pretty good job. Same basic pattern. Freeze him with the shield. Drop the, the fire. Mmm, Firebrands 3. Oh, we'll take that over Firebrand. So just so you can see the different item levels. So fire is an arrow in front of you for 53 for 55 damage. Damage plus 10%. This one's damage plus 20%. So it's just a little bit better. If you think of it like sort of D and D style, like plus one, plus two, plus three weapons. Uh, and those continue to go up as you get those upgrades. More and more upgrades means more and more damage and more and more abilities. So that you can see there we're doing more damage now. Jump across. We're gonna pick up that jewel. Oh boy. We're going to not get hit by that. This appears to unfortunately be a dead end. So it looks like we're going all the way back to the surface. That's where we, where we came from, right? Up here, is it? Yes, yes it is. So we want to go over here. And up. We still don't have enough to get in that 3700 gold door. Although we're pretty close. And we have another platforming section, which I am not good at, and they do. Those things do so much damage, and I do not have any more healing. Oh, god, items. So I gotta be real careful here. If I'm not real careful, this will be the end of our run. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but this is a pretty good run so far, and I'd like to keep it going if possible. Got him. So without any heals, this is a tough moment. But I think we can get through it if we just keep using our same strategy here to freeze and then kill. We can take maybe one more, two more hits. Kind of max and then we'll be we'll be toast. As long as that guy dies, we'll be okay. There we go. Got him. Got him, got him, got him. Hopefully we're getting close to the end of the level here. I can, uh, I could you know, teleport all the way back to the beginning of the level and exit there, but that is a long way. We've come so far. I don't really want to do that. This one doesn't go anywhere. Okay. Let me get a healing item. And uh, there we go. Let's open the door. Oh, this looks like a boss room. If this is a boss room, we're going to have a fast end. Oh, nope. We got the ramparts. Okay, well, yeah, Rob, it's this game. It's uh, Dead Cells. So there you go. Well, 13 minutes and 8 seconds into the run, and we made it back. So now we came back with 16 cells this time, and uh, we can upgrade any number of different things. I think what we're going to upgrade here is... Hmm, what do we want? Uh, you know, I like that Firebrand weapon a lot. Um, the Nutcracker. Everybody likes the Nutcracker. Let's, um... Let's see about putting them into the knife storm skill. There you go. We have unlocked the knife storm skill. And we have one skill, one more skill left. Very good. So now we can pick up knife storm and that is an excellent ability. Knife storm is my f knife storm is my favorite ability in this game so far because it will let me pretty much shoot a fan of knives around me that will pretty much clear the whole thing. All right, so let's go back out to the ramparts. I forgot to grab a potion. Oh, poop. Um, okay, it looks like it filled up automatically. Okay, that's good. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe I fucking forgot to do that. So now we're up on the ramparts, another level area. I've not been here before, so this is all fresh territory. 
And let's just, just demo that knife fan real quick. Definitely not perfect. Oh, I took some damage there. How did I take damage from? Oh, it was an arrow. Arrow boy. Have to watch out for the arrow shooting guys, I guess. And so this will just continue like that. We'll go from area to area. There's another enemy I haven't killed yet. This is a new a new air enemy that I haven't seen yet. Can't be frozen, but he can take some AoE damage, so toasted him up real easy there. So I'm gonna play real 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 sloppy here just so we can close out the video. I don't want it to be too long. Right, that guy is finally dead. Uh, we'll use our, our our heal now, even though we really shouldn't. H O E A O E on that guy. I almost said H O E on that guy. Ho bag. Super OP, all that damage. That AoE damage, just uh, that that dot damage as well, just is so much. Oh my God, what did I get myself into over here, huh? I don't know, but whatever it is, I managed to kill it. So this is the last thing we hadn't got yet. This is skill power. It improves our skill power and our cooldowns. Uh, makes our, our cooldowns on our right trigger ability, this one, just a little bit slower. Oh. As you can see now that we've gone up to the ramparts, everything hurts more. Uh, and that's how the game increases the difficulty on you. You don't necessarily going to get more enemies, but everything is going to hurt more. Uh, so I'm taking more damage from a single arrow that only did a few damage to begin with, to now those arrows are doing like 40-50 damage. And so it becomes more and more critical to just not get hit at all. Although, as you can see, as I'm in a, a more advanced area, I already have eight cells, even though I'm just kind of speed running through this area. And I'm not really doing anything in terms of, like, actually trying to find spaces or find things. I'm just kind of running through, hoping to try to get to the end. There's another health pickup. Health over 200 now. 280. I don't know if you can fall down, so I'm just not going to. Um, just not really sure if that's a thing, and I don't want to find out really, so... I don't know, I mean, it just it seems like this is the kind of game where falling would definitely kill you, so I'd rather not have to find that out the hard way. so close to dead, but this is another health. Man, I have like 395 health now. That's so much health. Uh, I guess it's time to find out if this kills me. And yes, it does. Uh, right to my death. Well, I lost those nine cells, but we're going to go back and uh, I learned a valuable lesson that you cannot jump off the top of the ramparts and survive. Uh, and we had a lot of gold, so this will probably be around 300 gold to pick up, I bet. 1,100 gold, so I have over 10,000 gold. Wow, that's impressive. So that's Dead Cells in a nutshell. Uh, it's a Metroidvania style roguelite where you don't keep your items after you die, uh, and every run is a new set of items, even though it's not a new level. So the levels stay the same, but the and levels and enemies, the enemies change, the levels stay the same, and you die and come back from the dead. Um, you will recognize the similar form format to some other other games that I, that you may recognize, <clears throat> there's a couple other games like this out there. But I'm enjoying it. Uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed watching it. And if you want to see more first look videos like this, just let me know down in the comments. Please subscribe to us on YouTube. Check us out on Twitter or Kitsuga underscore gaming. And it's been Fiona Fox with Kitsuga.com. First look at Dead Cells. Hope you enjoyed it.